In the quiet of the night, a teenage girl found herself in the solemn role of babysitter for a four-year-old boy in his modest suburban home. The evening began like any other, with playful giggles and bedtime stories occurring through the cozy abode. She tucked him in his bed, kissed his forehead, and turned off the light, leaving only a faint glow from the nightlight. Yet, as the night deepened its embrace, an eerie sense of foreboding settled over the house like a shroud, casting long shadows that danced menacingly along the walls. She felt a cold sweat break out on her forehead, and a nagging feeling that something was terribly wrong. It was amidst this uneasy silence that a sudden cacophony shattered the tranquility. A deafening crash echoed from the kitchen, sending a chill down the girl's spine. She jumped from the couch, where she had been watching a movie, and grabbed a baseball bat from the corner. With a sense of trepidation, she ventured forth into the dimly lit corridor, her footsteps hesitant against the cold linoleum floor. She could hear the faint sound of glass crunching under her feet, and the wind howling through the broken window. As she neared the kitchen, her heart skipped a beat at the sight that greeted her. A shattered window lay in ruins, its jagged edges gleaming in the moonlight, while a sinister handprint stained the pristine wall with a crimson hue. It looked like someone had tried to force their way in, leaving behind a trail of blood and terror. Fear gripped her heart like a vice as she realized the gravity of the situation, a mind racing with thoughts of impending danger lurking just beyond the threshold. She had to get the boy and get out of there, before it was too late. With trembling hands, she scooped up the boy in her arms, his innocent eyes wide with fear, and fled towards the sanctuary of the bathroom, her footsteps echoing off the tiled floor like a desperate plea for salvation. She slammed the door behind her, and with a quick twist of the lock, she sealed their refuge from the encroaching darkness. She placed the boy on the edge of the bathtub and wrapped a towel around him, trying to comfort him with soothing words. Her breaths came in ragged gasps as she struggled to quell the rising tide of panic. She reached for her phone, hoping to call for help, but found it dead. She cursed under her breath and wondered what else could go wrong. In the confines of their makeshift fortress, the girl huddled with the boy, her arms a feeble shield against the encroaching shadows that lurked just beyond the door. She could hear the faint sound of footsteps outside and the creaking of the floorboards, as if someone was searching for them. She held her breath and prayed that they would not be found. With every passing moment, the oppressive weight of dread pressed down upon her, threatening to suffocate her with its relentless embrace. Outside, the night whispered its secrets, the rustling of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl, a haunting symphony of fear that reverberated through the silent corridors of the house. She wished she could wake up from this nightmare, but she knew it was all too real. In a desperate bid for salvation, the girl fumbled for her phone, her trembling fingers navigating the familiar contours of the device with frantic urgency. She hoped that it still had some battery left, and that she could get a signal in the bathroom. With bated breath, she dialed the emergency number, her voice trembling as she relayed the harrowing ordeal to the dispatcher on the other end of the line. She gave them the address of the house and begged them to hurry, fearing that every second could be their last. Yet, to her dismay, the dispatcher informed her that it would be a grueling 15 minutes before help would arrive, a veritable eternity in the face of imminent peril. She felt a surge of despair and wondered if they would make it out alive. As the seconds stretched into an eternity, the girl strained her ears against the oppressive silence, her heart pounding in her chest like a drumbeat of impending doom. She could feel the boy's small body pressed against her, his breaths shallow and rapid, his eyes wide with terror. She tried to calm him down, whispering words of reassurance and comfort, but she knew he could sense her fear. Outside the bathroom door, she heard the unmistakable sound of footsteps, their ominous cadence a chilling reminder of the malevolent presence that lurked just beyond their fragile sanctuary. And then, a voice pierced the silence, its chilling timber sending shivers down her spine. I know you're in there, little girl. Come out and play with me. The words hung in the air like a sinister refrain, 
their malevolent intent sending a wave of terror crashing over the girl's fragile resolve. She felt a cold sweat break out on her forehead and a knot form in her stomach as she realized that he knew where they were hiding. She wondered how he had found them and what he wanted from them. She remembered the boy's stories about his uncle, a deranged soul who had escaped from a nearby mental asylum, his history tainted with violence and abuse. He had been obsessed with the boy, claiming that he was his son and that he would take him away from his parents. He had stalked them for months, sending them threatening messages and calls until they had obtained a restraining order against him. But that had not stopped him, and now he had broken into their house, intent on fulfilling his twisted fantasy. In the harrowing moments that followed, the girl clung to the boy with a fierce determination, her every instinct screaming for them to survive the nightmarish ordeal that had befallen them. Outside the bathroom door, the uncle's menacing voice grew louder, his sinister whispers a relentless assault on their frayed nerves. Yet, amidst the encroaching darkness, a glimmer of hope flickered in the girl's heart, a stubborn refusal to surrender to the abyss that threatened to consume them whole. And as the minutes stretched into an eternity, the sound of approaching sirens pierced the oppressive silence, their wailing cries a welcome harbinger of salvation in the face of impending doom. With a surge of relief, the girl clung to the boy, a trembling form a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable terror. And in the cold light of dawn, as the first rays of sunlight pierced the darkness, the girl emerged from the confines of the bathroom, a spirit battered but unbroken, a survivor of the nightmarish ordeal that had tested her to the very limits of her endurance. In the heart of a remote countryside, far away from the hustle and bustle of the city, stood a quaint farmhouse. Within its weathered walls, a young girl named Anna found herself entrusted with the solemn duty of babysitting two children, Lily and Jake, on a serene evening. The fading rays of the setting sun cast a warm glow over the bucolic landscape, bathing the farmhouse in a golden hue as the trio embarked on what was meant to be an evening of bliss and tranquility. As the evening progressed, the melodic cadence of laughter reverberated through the cozy abode, blending with the soothing harmonies of nature's symphony. The children, their youthful vigor tangible in the air, romped amidst the sun-drenched fields, their pure joy a tribute to the simple pleasures of life. Anna watched them with a smile, feeling a sense of calm and happiness. Yet, amidst the tranquility, a disturbing interruption loomed on the horizon ready to shatter the delicate facade of serenity. It was in the midst of this peaceful scene that Anna's attention was captivated by the flickering radiance of the television screen. With a pang of dread, she shifted her gaze towards the screen, her heart missing a beat as she witnessed a scene that would tear apart the fabric of their peaceful existence. A news reporter stood outside the very boundaries of the farmhouse, his presence a portent of imminent doom as he delivered the spine-chilling news. A dangerous fugitive, a notorious serial killer, was on the run, suspected to be skulking in the vicinity. He had escaped from a nearby prison, leaving behind a trail of blood and carnage. A surge of panic coursed through her veins as she wrestled with the enormity of the disclosure, her mind flooded with thoughts of impending peril lurking just beyond the security of the farmhouse walls. With quivering hands, she attempted to bolster their defenses a frantic effort to protect the children from the advancing menace. She ran to the doors and windows, hoping to lock them and call for help. Yet, to her terror, she discovered that the doors and windows were already secured from the outside, 
transforming their refuge into a dungeon of impending danger. She realized with a jolt that they were not alone, that the killer had already infiltrated their haven, and that he was waiting for the right moment to strike. As the oppressive weight of fear bore down upon her, a sudden disruption shattered the silence. The sound of splintering wood echoed through the farmhouse as the bandit burst through the door with reckless abandon. With a primal instinct coursing through her veins, Anna seized a shovel with trembling hands, her heart pounding in her chest as she prepared to confront the encroaching threat. She glanced at the children, who were frozen in fear, and whispered a silent prayer for their safety. In a desperate bid for survival, she lunged forward with unbridled determination, her senses heightened by the adrenaline coursing through her veins. With each swing of the shovel, she unleashed a torrent of fury upon the unsuspecting intruder, her movements fueled by a primal instinct to protect the innocent lives entrusted to her care. She felt the impact of the metal against the flesh, the crunch of the bones, the spurt of the blood. She did not stop, did not relent, did not show mercy. As the bandit recoiled in shock and pain, Anna seized the opportunity to usher the children to safety, a mind racing with a singular focus on reaching the sanctuary of the outside world. With the children in tow, she dashed through the threshold of the farmhouse, her heart pounding in her chest as she raced against the encroaching darkness. She did not look back, did not see the bandit's lifeless body on the floor, did not hear his final gasp of breath. As she later learned the full extent of the danger they had faced, the gravity of the situation weighed heavily upon her soul. The bandit had been armed and dangerous, his intentions nefarious, and his actions driven by a singular desire for violence and chaos. He had been the serial killer that had terrorized the region, claiming the lives of dozens of innocent victims. Yet, despite the odds stacked against them, Amma's unwavering courage had prevailed, guiding them safely through the storm and into the light of a new dawn. She had saved the children, and herself, from a fate worse than death. Amidst the silence of the night, a teenage boy found himself tasked with babysitting his younger sister. Entrusted with her care while their parents enjoyed a rare evening out, he embraced the responsibility with a blend of determination and apprehension. The weight of ensuring his six-year-old sibling's safety pressed upon him as he embarked on an evening filled with games, stories, and the gentle reassurance of a loving presence. Each passing moment reinforced his commitment to shield her from harm and preserve the tranquility of their home. As the night unfolded, an unexpected disruption shattered the calm. A resounding thud echoed from the depths of the basement, jolting him from his reverie. The sound, foreign and unsettling, stirred a primal unease within him, prompting a surge of apprehension tinged with curiosity. Torn between caution and curiosity, he ventured into the dimly lit recesses below armed with little more than a flashlight and a sense of trepidation. The oppressive silence of the house magnified the echoes of his footsteps, amplifying the eerie atmosphere that enveloped him. Descending the creaky stairs, a grisly tableau awaited him. A man lay motionless on the floor, bathed in an ominous pool of blood. Recognition dawned as he realized the man's identity, their neighbor who had vanished without a trace. A sense of dread gripped him as he grappled with the implications of the grim scene, his thoughts swirling in a frantic whirlwind of fear and uncertainty. Questions loomed in his mind, unanswered and foreboding, as he struggled to make sense of the inexplicable horror that lay before him. With trembling hands, he reached for his phone, intent on summoning aid in the face of the macabre discovery. Yet, 
fate intervened cruelly as he confronted the stark reality of a dormant device. Its lifeless screen a stark reminder of their isolation. Desperation clawed at his senses as he grappled with the magnitude of their predicament, the weight of responsibility bearing down upon him like a suffocating shroud. Driven by a primal instinct to protect his sister, he raced towards the stairs, a torrent of adrenaline coursing through his veins. His heart pounded with urgency as he ascended towards the sanctuary of their shared refuge, only to be met with a chilling revelation. The door stood ominously locked, a sinister barrier that severed their connection to safety. Panic surged through him as he realized the gravity of their plight, the stifling confines of their home transformed into a prison of terror. A gut-wrenching scream shattered the silence, a haunting lament that pierced through the veil of darkness. His sister's anguished cry reverberated through the corridors, a poignant reminder of the imminent threat that loomed over them. With unyielding determination, he launched himself at the door, his frantic efforts fueled by an unwavering resolve to reach her side. The barrier yielded to his relentless assault, splintering under the force of his desperation, but it was too late. In the aftermath of the harrowing ordeal, the truth emerged with chilling clarity. They had fallen victim to a malevolent force lurking within the shadows of their home. The basement harbored a dark secret, concealing the presence of a serial killer who had orchestrated their demise with meticulous precision. The revelation of their neighbor's true nature cast a pall of dread over their once tranquil abode, leaving behind a legacy of fear and anguish that echoed through the corridors of their shattered innocence. He burst into the room and came to a screeching halt when he witnessed the horrifying scene of the man looming over his sister, a wicked phantom clutching a knife in his hand, its edge sparkling with the crimson stains of unspeakable crimes. Terror squeezed his heart with steel claws as he peered into the abyss of the man's eyes, a void where there was not a trace of remorse or humanity. After the dreadful ordeal they had endured, the truth had unfurled its tentacles, exposing the sinister plot that hid behind the veil of normalcy. It became evident that the man was no random intruder, but an evil force, a serial killer trapped among them whose insatiable hunger for blood compelled him to seek shelter in the darkness of their basement. His devious plans had cut off the lifeline of communication, isolating them from the outside world with surgical accuracy. As the reverberations of horror subsided into the depths of memory, the boy and his sister found comfort in each other's embrace, their bond fortified by the ordeal of fire. But the wounds of that fateful night remained as a bleak reminder of the frailty of innocence, a testament to the horrors that lurked in the darkest nooks of the human soul. Despite the swift action of law enforcement, their efforts were futile as they arrived on the scene too late. A neighbor's call had been ignored for too long, and the grim reality awaited them in the basement. Three lifeless bodies lay on the cold concrete floor, their chests disfigured by the ghastly imprint of the number six carved into their flesh. The chilling sight sent shivers down the spines of the investigators, a spooky reminder of the malevolent presence that haunted the shadows of their community.